What's up, you guys? It's time for another Late Night Thoughts solo podcast. I think this is actually really good timing for this because I just posted a blog called Why Am I So Awkward? So that makes sense that we're having a solo moment tonight. <laughs> I just wasn't in the headspace for a long chat with another person this week, which is hilarious, but whatever. Um, so I'll set the scene for you. It's about 2 a.m. right now on, I guess, technically Tuesday morning. And I have no business being awake, but it's really warm, and I have a problem with coffee, you know? So why not do these things late night? Plus, honestly, you don't want me to do a morning podcast. No, trust me, I'm not a morning person. So let's get into some uh, expansion on this awkwardness thing, and uh, maybe I'll answer a couple of the questions that I've gotten recently from people. All right, so what sparked this awkwardness post is that I've just been really aware of how socially elusive I've been lately. I've been a little extra self-conscious, and uh, I feel it manifesting around other people. It kind of sneaks up in my body language, and I look down a lot when uh, walking past people right now. I'm like hurrying to get in and out of places without engaging. I've just been doing a lot of avoiding like I'm a bother to people. And this topic has come up before in the first podcast that I ever did with my friend uh, Billy, where we talk about how this social anxiety can sometimes just be a, a story that we're telling ourselves, like we're convincing ourselves that other people see us as a nuisance, but it's pretty much all self-created. And through that self-created nervousness, we're really just holding back our own days. I mean, like, I'm, and I'm not intrinsically awkward. So really, when I say to myself, why am I so awkward? I should be saying, why do you feel so awkward? Because it's just a feeling passing through and not my identity, you know? Uh, maybe some of you guys get that. But I wrote that awkwardness post because I had a particular day where just everything fell off, you know? I was a little visually self-conscious it's like a hot day and I'm just doing a little more labor at work than usual. I'm feeling like just don't look at me. I'm having a don't look at me day. Uh, and then I just a lot of things piled up. I held the door open for two different people that just totally ignored my presence. Uh, I, mean, I smiled at someone, gave me no reaction. I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous, but they're like these little moments that were just kind of all adding up. And uh, it's just how I felt that day. Then... When I finally get home, I uh, took my dogs out, of course, uh, my puppy children. And when I was headed towards taking them back inside, I realized my neighbors are coming out at their place. Now, on an awkward day like I was having, uh, this is a red alert. I'm over here like, damn, I was hoping to not have any more human interaction today. So I actually pick up my older pup. Her name is Pumpkin. She's 14 and beautiful. Uh, you know, but she walks, she walks kind of real slow. She's in no rush, and she wants to sniff all of the blades of grass. And in reality, we could all learn something from her. But on this day, I needed speed. So I picked her up in the hopes that me and my other little chihuahua companion over here could make a hasty reentry into my apartment. Well, this was not to be. So my neighbor, and you know, a lovely dude, always nice and pleasant. I just have... No reason to avoid this man. He smiles at me and says, hey, how's it going? Now, here's the part I didn't mention. I've got earbuds in. I'm actually listening to a podcast. So I've got words flying around my ears already. And the only reason I know that's what he said is because I can read the man's lips. So I answer, I'm great. How are you? Not even fully realizing that I'm just not going to hear his response. Then he says something like prolonged, like he answers and says more. Do I hear it? No, because I'm like deaf via podcast over here. So I just try to smile real nice and I just keep beelining for my home. But I'm also reading his face and I think he asked me something. Like, I don't know, guys, I could have just I could have just removed my earbuds and said, sorry, would you say Did I do that? No, I didn't. Instead, I just. Minnie panicked and thought, just say something nice. So I said, you guys have a good night. And I walked away. But as I turned, I tell you, something about his facial expression told me that I'd, I'd missed something in that, in that combo. Like I'd, I'd venture to say 
that he asked me a question and I said, you guys have a good night. So, I know it's dumb, you know, but I feel bad. That day just got me thinking about why I've been behaving in such an awkward way here and there lately. Too much self-consciousness, you know? Gotta let it go. It's doing me no good, and maybe it's uh, doing you no good. And you can relate to just feeling off every once in a while. Uh, have you ever been Have you ever been out shopping, and you see someone you know that you don't want to have small talk with, and you literally pull like an about-face moonwalk situation to be unseen so that you can avoid it. Yeah, I did one of those too. I did one of those. <laughs> just, I just ducked out of there as quickly as I could. So I guess that's a form of like a mini, mini social anxiety. Sometimes, you know, on the bad days, you kind of see it. On the good days, you don't. Or I don't feel it at all. Just kind of a toss up. I think all we really need to do sometimes when we're feeling that way is just is just be ourselves and not worry about the rest, you know? Got to cut out all that nonsense. But, uh, you know, I was saying to my friend Michelle, what probably should happen is that I should find a guy that gets to see me as relaxed and casual as my friends see me most of the time. Because I'm just much lighter. And I'm, my, I'm more myself, quite frankly. I'm just a little bit more fun. And I kind of realized that most of the first couple dates I go on, I'm just more guarded. And I think I come off reserved. That's kind of my personality type in the beginning sometimes, uh, depending on how I'm interacting with that other person, of course. But, you know, sometimes it takes me a little bit more time to open up. And, you know, it's just not my most natural state to do this online dating thing sometimes because of that. Because you're going in cold with a, you know, a brand new person. Uh, sometimes that's been fun in the past, but it really lacks the excitement that comes from meeting someone organically. And getting to, like, build up a little chemistry and, you know, for lack of a better word, like, you get to crush on them a little bit first before you go out on the date. So there's, like, a different kind of excitement, you know? So that's just the thought. But uh, speaking of that, actually, I had an interesting conversation about attraction this past week. It was uh, myself, so, you know, a mixed woman, two African-American gentlemen, and uh, a Portuguese dude at a table. So that sounds like the start of a bad joke. It's not. It's a real moment in my life. So we get to talking about attraction and what we were attracted to and what we don't seem to be attracted to usually. So we just kind of discussed all that stuff, like no judgment, just kind of talking. And we discussed how we might have become attracted to certain types and the fact that while we're not instinctively super attracted to cer certain ethnic backgrounds, that we most definitely still like can look at anyone and be like, yeah, that's absolutely a good looking human being. So why is that? Why is it that it's not a part of our usual attraction? You know, maybe it's psychological. Maybe it's the associations we have from our pasts for whatever reason. I've read a little bit about it and it says that our attraction is based heavily on what was appealing to us in our teenage years. Uh, it could be based on what and who is around you, where you grew up, and what was deemed attractive in your social groups. Maybe it's a lot of things. How about uh, what pheromones? Is that in there? I don't know. I'm not sure, but it really got me thinking about how we develop certain things that kind of we're always attracted to, and then some that we don't seem to gravitate towards most often. I'd actually really like to know what you guys think about where our attractions come from. Because it's fascinating to really talk about what's going on in that realm. And here's the other thing. As I get older, I'm most definitely more open to step outside of my, you know, quote unquote, normal type. I have a type based on my track record, you know, but I don't really want to be pigeonholed into saying that I'm into just one certain description, right? Because it's actually not, that's not true. That's not true. Every once in a while, I'm attracted to people that that's, that surprise me for all kinds of different reasons. Um, because the person on the inside and the connection is really what matters more and more every day. It's just valuable, you know. Uh, here's another question. Someone asked me this week to talk about what my childhood was like. Um, I'll give you give some sort of a basic rundown. I'm from San Diego. I was technically raised an only child, but I do have a number of half-siblings. Went to a Spanish immersion school, so puedo hablar español. 
though I'm slow when I speak it these days, if you ever hear me use it, which you are unlikely to, because it's mad rare that I do it. Um, I used to be pretty quiet and shy for a long portion of my life that I kind of had to struggle out of and still relapse into when I don't feel like I'm in my element. My parents ran their own business while I was young, so I spent a lot of time in an office. I have very distinct memories, actually, of uh, climbing on suitcases and making necklaces out of paper clips, and also watching Cinderella on VHS while, while uh, laying in some office chairs that were pushed together. So those are just kind of weird, so weird childhood memories. Um, I, wore, I wore glasses, still do. Contacts most of the time these days, though. Got them when I was young due to the fact that I've uh, got a lot of nearsightedness happening over here. My first pair was real thick, you guys. It's real thick, real circular. Uh, I was a tomboy for a hot minute. Went through a jersey and sweatshirt wearing phase. Uh, let's see, music. I love music. Took guitar, keyboard, and voice lessons for a bit, but was always too shy to perform except for guitar later on, kind of in high school. Um, in fact, you know, I had a vocal recital once, and I think I actually worried myself sick about it. Like, I got sick. Couldn't do it. Uh, actually, I practically wished myself sick. That's how, <laughs> that's how much of a nervous wreck I was about it. But, um, yeah, so I did that. I was a gymnast for a long time. I used to perform in a little group called the Tumbling Ninja Tigers, or TNT. That's cute, right? And then I got kind of... I think I, I quit when I got kind of overwhelmed with too many activities and worrying about breaking bones and such. It was just really wearing on my body at the time. But, uh, you know, I was just a good kid. I was a little goody two-shoes most, most of the time. I loved writing. Loved it. My mom was a workout instructor at the YMCA when I was a kid, and a lot of times she would pick me up and take me there right after school so she could teach. And I'd hang out in the back of the room just ferociously writing some new pirate adventure or diary entry or whatever in my journal. I just loved to write and create new worlds. I was like super compelled to do it and it felt necessary. And that's why I was a screenwriting major in college and why I'm really grateful that I've found some new outlet for it now as an adult human. So there's some, there's some basics of young me. Next question was, uh, some people have asked me how to start a podcast and why I got into it. Well, as far as the how-to part goes, I think I'm actually going to write a post on that and what some of those logistics are. There are plenty of articles on it if you toss that search in the Googles, of course, but I'd be happy to share with you guys kind of in layman's terms some of the things that I think are most helpful for getting started and what I've really learned in this uh, first couple of months here. So I'll work on that and I'll leave it for you on the site soon if you're into it. Um, but as far as why, I mean, I think, I think I was motivated by people around me to get into this, like my friend Eric, who I podcasted with, my friend BJ as well, who also did a podcast with him on his podcast. Um, I think I actually told BJ once before I ever recorded anything was that my goal was that each podcast have at least one moment of vulnerability. I just wanted some of that, some of that realness, you know, it's what I've been working on personally and uh, it felt like. It should be a part of this new thing I was getting into. So that kind of laid a foundation of interest. And then I realized that it's also just a, just a wonderful excuse to sit down and have genuine conversation with people. Despite my occasional awkwardness, you guys, I love a nice deep combo session. I like to listen to other people share their stories and honestly, to just see where the conversation takes us. I don't really plan a whole lot going into it because I want to just let it be what it's going to be for the most part. It's two people talking. Two people just connecting through verbal sounds, you know. And uh, my blog is written to connect, so this podcast is really just an extension of that. And if you're thinking of starting a podcast for yourself and people are saying things like, what for? Like, why would you do that? There's already a ton of them. Sure, but, you know, ignore all of that. If you want to do it, do it. Do it for you because you have a voice and you want to create something. You know, it's all the reason you need. So just be genuine and have fun with it. For this next one, someone said to me, 
you seem like you have it all figured out. How did you get to that place? So basically, I think it's because, you know, I write about these topics of kind of self-improvement and things like that. I get it. But look, that's a really flattering statement. And I thank this man for thinking that. But no, I absolutely do not have everything figured out. <laughs> it's, I mean, really, when I write about topics like uh, doubt, perfectionism, vulnerability, awkwardness, all those kinds of things, like I'm writing them because they are things that I'm also dealing with and processing myself. So I'm writing these posts just as much for myself to go back and be able to read as anyone, as for anyone else too. And really they're just a kind of a really great way to solidify the thought patterns and philosophies that I've been trying to live by. So these are mostly thought processes that I've grown to appreciate through a lot of reading. Philosophy and self-improvement based books can be amazingly helpful in keeping your mind right. Then through those new thought patterns, you really just sit down for some honest self-reflection and ask yourself, what do I need to work on? And you take it from there, you know? So trust me, none of these topics that I write or talk about are intended to be preachy because I'm working on all of this stuff and uh, getting better with time. And it's all kind of just a journey of self-exploration. And I think it's fun. I think everybody should spend the time to really try to get to know themselves. And you know that Myers-Briggs personality test? Uh, if you don't, get out there and take it online because it's pretty interesting. But anyway, I'm an INFP, which translates to me having an introverted, intuitive, feeling, perceptive personality. Um, in a nutshell, in a little tiny nutshell, it makes me sensitive, fascinated by truth and the discovery of, of kind of self. So, you know, I might as well be on this quest for progress and trying to make myself better and then relate to as many people as I can along the way. You know, the writing is a cool way to connect with people that might be thinking about these things. And now it's expanded into this podcast form too. So that's great. And, uh, Long story short, I absolutely don't have it all figured out, but I think it's all worth discussing. And I've definitely found some philosophies like uh, Stoicism and, and Taoism, actually, that I think can be incredibly beneficial. Next question is, okay, this, let's talk about this question. Why are you single? And I've been single for a hot minute. This is a question people ask you to be kind of a compliment, but is also kind of trying to figure out what's wrong with you all at the same time. <laughs> You know, it's a, you know, it's a combo of choice, priorities, timing, and just maybe not ideal matches. You know, I wrote a post about this, so you can check it out on my blog, which is probably going to be more well put than whatever words I'm about to say. But uh, the updated answer, I guess, is that I'm just looking for some real connection. I want to find somebody that I don't feel the need to be ideal around. And that's willing to take some time to get to know each other. That makes me laugh. And we make fun of the concept of someone that makes us laugh when we give that as a, as a reason. Um, but like, isn't that wildly important? When we laugh, our guards are down. Like we're youthful. And uh, we recapture some of that innocence. and keeps things from getting, you know, too serious in a bad way. Uh, and that person automatically has a way of making us feel good that's just so accessible. So humor is valid, but it's tricky lately. With the online dating, it's hard because I've gotten tired of the swiping. You know, it's just not set up really for real connection. It's set up for convenience. And while it's nice to be able to meet people that you might normally cross paths with, it's like I'm kind of in the mood to just cross paths with someone in a real way. You know, I'm repelled by the idea of uh, forcing things right now, I guess. So I'm just, just going to go with the flow for now and see what I run into while I'm uh, busy with other stuff. I just want to be excited by somebody and have them be excited about me. Isn't that what we all want? Of course. Simple and also not simple. <laughs> so, I mean, how about you guys, though? Like, for the single ones, are you guys still into the dating apps after doing it for a while? Or is it kind of is it kind of wearing on you? I'm curious. I'm curious. Most people that I've talked about um, the dating app thing recently 
sound like they're kind of getting tired of it and we kind of instinctively start to go back to it, you know, when we're just feeling like, oh, well, I'll just meet somebody. You know, get into a swipe session. I don't know. Not exciting. But isn't that what we want? And you know, I haven't been, I haven't been a big movie watcher these days, but I ended up watching uh, What Women Want the other day. Oh, you guys remember that movie? It's Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt. Still good. Still holds up. And it just got it just got me in a way that only a movie from the year 2000 can do. You know, it's just so damn charming. He even, you know, it made me tear up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like when he shows up to his daughter, uh his, to shows up to his daughter's prom after it's gone all terrible and has to take her home. And then when he saves that woman from committing suicide at her apartment, and he confesses at the end to loving Helen Hunt. Like, and don't say spoiler alert because you guys have had like 17 years to watch this movie. But, you know, it's just refreshing. It's refreshing somehow. I feel like the storytelling was a little different back then. And I was into it. So, you know, watch that. Watch that if you want to feel nice. You want to feel nice one of these evenings. Uh, side note, I watched the, watched the new Mummy movie tonight. Tom Cruise is in it? And they worked in... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde into the storyline? I mean, no thank you. Like, the original still completely holds up. It completely holds up. Go back and watch The Mummy and tell me it's not still amazing. Plus, Brendan Fraser in his prime. And you guys know. You guys know how I feel about some Brendan Fraser. Uh, last topic, friends. Uh, someone asked me what I think about simulation theory. So, for those that haven't heard of that, it's basically the idea that we are currently living in a simulation, that life is pretty much just an incredible video game. Now, I think it's a, I think it's a fascinating idea. We're seeing pretty impressive leaps in technology, and there's talk that we could eventually create something that's indistinguishable from reality. So who is to say that we haven't done it already? Who's to say what reality is at that point? If you're having experiences that move you and feel real and visceral at a certain point and that maybe change you as a person, who's to say what reality is? Something that's tangible, I suppose? Hey, I won't shut down the idea because how would I know if we were in one? I wouldn't. But the theory is really interesting. Uh, and a great one to to kind of knock around uh, because it's like, where are we headed with the invention of VR? We seem hell-bent on creating simulated, simulated experiences, things that make us feel, that force us to make choices, that um, allow us to live out adventures and experience different worlds. I mean, even though we've got real life right here and now, it also seems like we're on the way to creating some AI that'll be way more efficient than people. Like, they'll probably look at us at some point, they'll look at us humans and be like, what are you for? <laughs> you are so imperfect. I mean, if humans end up making something that impressive, we'd basically be creating our replacements. Ugh. I mean, I mean, it's all heavy. It's all heavy. And it's a fascinating thing to think about. Maybe, you guys... Maybe we're in it. Or maybe we're just on our way to it. I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded. In the same way that I don't shut down the idea of ghosts. Because, like, what do I know? What do I know, really? You know, other people have had experiences, and people have theories about simulation, and, you know, real smart people, too. I think, what's it, what is it? Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think, has talked about that, and Elon Musk. Like, I don't know. I just want to hear it all. My ears are open. Anyways, I've talked your ears off long enough for this week. Uh, check out the new blog and maybe some older ones while you're there. You can find those at CourtneyDiamond.com. And you know where to find the podcast because, you know, you're already here. So thanks for listening. And if you've enjoyed this time we've shared together, uh, maybe leave a nice rating or comment if you have the chance. I very much appreciate it. And get in touch with me about attraction, like I said before, dating, about the fact that you love or hate the idea that this could all be a simulation. I'd love to hear from you, uh, and I hope you guys have a great super non-awkward day. I'll talk to you soon.